When Polaris came out with their Pro-R right away, UTV enthusiasts were wondering what Can-Am's answer would be, and we finally have it in the new Can-Am. Maverick R and Am has been developing the new Maverick R for five years, and everything on the car except for the seats are brand new from the ground up. Engine, transmission, front diff, chassis, suspension, everything was developed from the initial concept. We won't bore you with all the technical details on the car. If you're reading this review, chances are you've already deep dove in all the numbers. For this review, we are going to come in from first-hand experience, putting 150 hard miles on the Maverick RXS Smart Shocks Edition. We were lucky enough to have none other than Can-Am factory driver Phil Blurton lead our ride through the Nevada desert starting in Hawthorne and eventually connecting with this year's Vegas to Reno course and taking it all the way to the finish in Dayton. You can stare at a computer screen till you're blue in the face comparing wheel travel, tire scrub numbers, horsepower, weight, and other things, but what really matters is how it feels when you drive it. What's the user's end experience? Being able to put 150 miles on the car over two days really gave me a good look on what I liked about it, things I think need improvement, and how the car compares to my Pro R. Also, Robbie, I know you're reading this. Let's get a speed car over to RDC so we can do a full comparison of the three cars. Appearance. Let's be honest, most people hated the front end when photos first came out of the new model and it overshadowed the rest of what the car was. The best thing to come out of the internet is memes, and there were plenty of them floating around. You probably have a few saved to your phone and in your group chat with friends. But change is scary, and while that suspension design has been around for a while, this is the first time you've seen it on a side-by-side. -side. I remember when the Pro XP first came out for Polaris, and the memes came out comparing it to a Pontiac Aztec. Unlike Instagram models, the Maverick R actually looks better in person. Yes, the front suspension draws your eye, but you forget it's there after spending some time around it. The body lines are well thought out and it does a good job of differentiating itself from the X3. The designers took inspiration from things like fighter jets, Cobras, and other sleek things, and it definitely has that feel to it. Phil Blurton, who lead our rides, had his Maverick R out there with his aftermarket cage and 35 BFGs, and it made a stock car look even better. Suspension Can AM came in with an all-new redesign of their front and rear suspensions going with a heavy-duty tall knuckle to help achieve better steering geometry, better load distribution, improved roll center height, among other things. A big thing with the Can-Am X3 is feedback in the steering wheel. With the new suspension, there is zero feedback in the steering wheel over rocks, whoops, washouts, etc. Now I did run the steering in the max setting because that's how I like mine set up. But talking to the other journalists, there was no feedback in all the different settings. On my own Pro R, you can get the steering wheel to dance pretty good in certain situations like clipping a rocket speed or hitting a washout, but didn't experience any of that on the Maverick R. Also note, I didn't hit any rocks at speed like some of my fellow journalists. When I first saw the car, I did expect there to be some good body roll on the car, but after throwing the car into corners at the start of the ride, I was pleasantly surprised. The geometry on the car paired with the live valve does a good job of keeping the car planted. Even in situations like going into a corner that's off camber, it never felt tipsy.